Hi, I'm Frank Turner. I'm at the legendary Aragon Ballroom in Chicago. Uh, we're playing here tonight, and today I'm going to talk through the gear that I use for a live show. Okay, so here we are. We're at the Brain Center of Operations. This is the tap dancing I do when I'm playing a show. Um, it's actually not all that complicated, but just so that you know, so we've got a boss tuner here that keeps me in tune, and I also use a mute pedal. So we go in there. Uh, then we're into an AB box because I play both electric and acoustic. When it's on the acoustic channel, uh, here it goes through to a Fishman Aura Spectrum DI, which is the best DI for acoustic guitars that I'm aware of. I've got a spare one over there in case that goes down, and a spare tuner as well. But that's the acoustic line, so that's pretty simple. When I play electric, we're into this guy, which is part of my Kemper setup, which is a, an amp modeling thing, which, uh, first of all, amp modeling technology and software these days is so good that it sounds really great live and secondly it means that when we're flying around the world I don't have to cart a gigantic pile of amps around with me I can just uh, take a USB key with my sounds on and uh, you can see uh, the sounds I have down here I've got chorus basic ish and clean uh, which I use for various different things um, to be honest, on the, on the new album I played a lot more electric than I have in the past um, and I'm sort of bringing some electric into some of the older songs as well. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that that range of sounds will expand over time, but that's where we are for the time being. So to talk us through, so the chorus sound is a sort of clean, sort of like 80s chorus sound that I use on, on the song There She Is. Uh, basic is a kind of gritty, uh, chuggy electric sound, you know, sort of classic punk rock guitar sound. Clean does what's in the tin, and Ish is somewhere halfway between clean and basic. It just means it's sort of it's got a bit of drive on it, but it's not as driven as basic. So uh, generally speaking, on stage for everything, we use EV microphones, who are great. Uh, at the moment, for my vocal microphones, I'm using a Shure SM58, and ladies and gentlemen, it's wireless, which means I can go anywhere that I want to go, and no one can stop me. So here we are, we're in Guitar World, this is Cahir's little area, he's our guitar tech, he looks after everything, sets up, brings me mics when I need them and all that kind of thing. Everybody's guitars are here, but we're going to talk about mine. Uh, for my acoustic guitars, which is my main weapon of choice, I actually have a brand new Martin guitar right here, um, which I've been playing for the last, uh, for this tour, and it's absolutely phenomenal, it sounds great, it plays awesome. The fretboard's a little wider than I was used to, but actually I've been starting to really enjoy that because it gives me a little bit more kind of room for error with my fretting, should we say. But, um, they sound nice as acoustic guitars, they sound great plugged in through my Fishman DIs um, and they are, uh, they're sturdy as well which is really useful because I have quite a long and colourful history of breaking guitars when I'm on stage so they can take a beating which is important. So for strings I use Ernie Ball strings, uh, we've got Ernie Ball straps as well for that matter. Ernie Ball have been great to us over the years, they great strings. Um, something I learned a long time ago actually was that I used to break strings quite a lot and I kept getting heavier and heavier gauges and heavier picks and this kind of thing. Uh, or indeed lighter picks uh, and then uh, I figured out after a while that's the wrong way to go I went a little lighter on the gauge of my strings and a little heavier with my picks and it's all about the feel and the pushback that I get in this hand um, and, and that just naturally made me play a little less aggressively than I was and I stopped breaking strings so hooray also I should say so we have this Martin over here we have an it's identical twin um, so I basically there's no difference at all between these two guitars the idea is that I change guitar every three songs or so so that Cahir can keep them in tune I don't have to do that boring thing of standing on stage tuning my guitar uh, and the whole smoke the whole show runs more smoothly this as I said is Cahir's world over here we have the strings drawer which has everybody's strings in these are my acoustic strings We've got Ernie Ball acoustic mediums 13s there and that's what I use so for a capo, um, I use Kaisers, I love them, uh, they're firm, they're dependable, um, and uh, they stay on, which is kind of useful as well. And they sit nicely on the headstock of the guitar, so that if I change my mind during a song, I can just pop a capo on. Uh, for picks, uh, we have so many of these hanging around, it's kind of ridiculous, but I use nylon picks actually. Uh, so that's an early ball USA nylon, and that's an 88 uh, heavy pick, um, does exactly what I need to do, and the grip on it's really important for me. When I use Tortex plastic picks, I just drop them everywhere. Moving on now to electric guitars, which as I say is a thing that I'm starting to kind of get my teeth into a bit more. I have here one of my favorite objects in the world. It's a Gibson Les Paul LE series and it's white. Um, this was the first one that arrived in the UK actually and they were very kind to give it to me. I love the sound of Les Pauls, but they're a bit too heavy for me to play regularly. I have back issues, plus they're just crazy heavy. You can't really throw them around. Uh, so they've come up with this hollow body version of the classic Les Paul. Also the F-holes match my tattoos, which I'm quite pleased with. But yeah, it's a great guitar. It sounds awesome. It sounds really chunky. We've got Gibson pickups in there, which sound great. Um, and uh, it, you know, it plays well. The intonation is perfect. It's everything I need out of an electric guitar. Um, I've got only ball strings on these. Um, uh, what gauge strings do I have in this? We've got 13s on this one as well, same as my acoustics, which keeps me happy. Um, the other thing that we've done with this guitar, because I only use the treble uh, pickup position, we've actually taken the wiring out of this, so this switch does nothing at all. Uh, a problem we used to have before we did that is while I'm playing, I constantly hit it like that, and then 
change my sound, which would drive me and my sound guy absolutely nuts. So we've taken that problem out of commission, and these just stay all the way up. The other electric guitar that I have with me on tour, which is, uh, initially we just brought along as a backup, although the tone of it's slightly different, so I've started using it on a couple of specific songs. But it's over here somewhere. Yes, there it is. Um, this is a Gibson Les Paul Jr. Um, and uh, I'm a, just a huge fan of, of the look and the feel and the heritage of the Junior, do you know what I mean? It makes me think of kind of Johnny Thunders, Johnny Ramone, people like that. Um, it's a classic punk rock guitar. Um, it's got a bit more of a kind of buzz story kind of vibe to it, but um, yeah, the, we've, I've, I've started bringing it into the set on a couple of songs here and there. Um, but also, if that one dies, I got this one. In terms of guitar tunings, when I started um, writing solo songs, I had this real thing about how I was always going to use standard tuning because I had this idea that, you know, if I sort of like, <laughs> you know, got kidnapped in the Ecuadorian jungle or something and there was a guitar there, I wouldn't need to then spend 10 minutes trying to put in some weird folk tuning um, in order to play a song. And, and I think there's something kind of cool about the classic, um, the classic, you know, EADGB tuning. Um, there's a reason that that's the standard tuning, um, it's certainly, I feel like when I use open tunings, which I do occasionally, uh, they tend to lead you in certain preordained directions and I feel like there's a bit more openness because there's no overall kind of tonal resonance to the standard open tuning. Um, I do, having said all of that, I've got a handful of songs that are in Dadgad, which is a cool kind of traditional English tuning, and a couple of songs in open G as well. But um, when I get to those, uh, we generally tend to either have a spare guitar uh, that's specifically for that tuning or poor old Kahe, my guitar tech, has to quickly retune one of them while I'm playing another song and then bring it out and then swap it back in again. When we're on stage, we use uh, in-ear monitoring. Um, it's something I started using uh, probably about four or five years ago, and it's an absolute godsend. Uh, we use JH audio in-ears, JH13s. These are molded to fit my ears exactly. Um, they don't, they're not cheap, um, uh, but they're absolutely worth it just in terms of the control that I get. Um, Johnny, my monitor engineer, uh, has a mix, for, an individual mix for each person on stage, but also he kind of knows what we all like now because we've been working for Johnny for nearly a decade now. So quite often if I need something turned up down before I asked for it Johnny's already got it for me but also you can control the overall volume of what you're hearing which is really important because you know I need to protect my ears I want to do this for a long time and I don't want to go deaf and tinnitus is a serious issue that musicians everywhere should take seriously um, the other thing some people find in-ear monitoring a little bit isolating on stage um, but we have crowd mics we've got some condenser mics pointed at the audience and I can mix those into what I'm getting so I get some feel of the room as well but again you have control over the level of that which is really really useful so this is a part of the uh, gear that we call the Starship Enterprise. Um, we have, over here we have the monitor board which Johnny uses, and then these are all of the uh, camper amps and the wireless sections. I have a wireless thing on my guitar as well, which means, as well as the microphone, I can charge around without tripping over. Um, uh, the campers, like I say, they, you know, we have a set of them that we have in the USA and we have a set of them in the UK, and we can always, you know, we can store the sounds that we use and transfer them across when we travel internationally without having to fly really expensive amps and on really expensive freight flights. So uh, campers have been a real godsend for us. To be honest, I, when I started, I've only recently started playing electric guitar live as part of my thing, so um, I went straight in on the campers because uh, my sound guy, Luke, is very keen on them. They make his job out front a lot easier. Um, in terms of sounds, I mean, I'm not the biggest amp nerd in the world. I'm a big fan of orange amps, um, but I mean, to be honest, um, you know, a Marshall M100 will do me too as well. Um, just sort of classic, chunky uh, punk rock guitar sounds is what I'm generally looking for. So, my name's Frank Turner, that's a run through of my gear. Big, big shout out to Ernie Ball, to EV, to Martin, to Gibson. Uh, and indeed, we haven't even talked about drums and keys, so we've got Nord, we've got um, SJC drums, all this kind of thing, they all look after us very well. The new album, Be More Kind, is out now. We're on tour for the foreseeable future, so come and say hi to the show.